Wow, this is recorded how many years ago? Uh, six years ago, when you, when you were here? You were here, right? Uh, Alan, right? Yeah, that was many years ago. And we all changed. Uh, <laughs> people get older, you know. Uh, um, uh, so that's an indication that we should really, life is just a flux of activities. It goes away very quickly. And, um, what is an average life span these days? Fortunately, we are in Vancouver, we are in Canada, and I think we will rank up the number six or seven in uh, average longevity of 80 women, 86. So women, you know that you have some more years to go. <laughs> Men are shorter. Um, surprisingly, I think the number one and number two, Japan used to be the number one. Uh, the longevity is, is very high. And now Hong Kong is almost the one and two. <laughs> I don't understand why. Um, Canada has the, has the most pure air and nature and everything. Maybe they have the very good med medical, medical services in Hong Kong. But anyway, life is short. And during this short lifespan, what do you do? What do we all do? We're caring for our breakfast, dinner, and lunch, and we go out looking for a job. We, uh, we tend to our families and our kids. We form a family, all that and all that. And after all that is done, then you pass through all these years, finally, you have to say goodbye. And when you say goodbye, you cannot bring anything with you. You come to this world naked, and you go away this world with nothing in your hands. You come naked and you go away. Um, not naked, <laughs> but, but um, with nothing. You know what you, you brought with you when, when, you leave your, you, when, you, when you leave this world? You still brought something with you. You know what, you, 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 what, what did you bring with you when, you when you leave this world? Your karmic energy. Everything that you have done is not forgotten. It's like what your key and your keyboard and it got registered in your disk drive. It will, not, you, it will not go away. Hopefully all this coming energy is wholesome energy. If you have a lot of unwholesome energy, oh, that would be terrible for you. You roll into vicious rams. Um, if you have performed a lot of wholesome energy, then you roll into meritorious rams, better rams. What are these? The three vicious ones and the three, say, meritorious ones. One of the three virtues, say, virtuous but meritorious ones. Do you know what, what are those three? Human ram, heavenly ram, and azura ram. ram. Heavenly ram is not, shouldn't be the ultimate way you go. Everybody, well, I want to go to heaven. After your energy is all spent, you still roll down to reincarnation. So don't think that heaven is the way to go. Heaven is the most happy. The he There's no suffering in heaven except that you still have to die after millions of years. So don't think about, I've just go to heaven. Buddha said, heaven is not the final way to go. You have to go beyond heaven because heaven is still living in, in the three stratas of the universe. Anyway, when you, when you leave your body, what do you bring with you? The karmic energy. And uh, if you always have done unwholesome things, it will be terrible for you. I still remember that movie that is always imprinted in my mind, Ghost. I still have that. What is the last sentence that, that the, 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 the male role say? He said, Molly, it's amazing the love you can bring with you when you go to heaven. Something like that. But if they didn't do any love, what you do is all crimes. You know, what did you bring? What did you bring down to hell? It's always good to, to review that movie again. That's the first movie that emphasized on reincarnations. 
And that movie has a very strong, very good box office. And since then, there are a lot of movies about reincarnations, about, about, relig about religion. And I know that the first movie that I get in contact with is many, many years ago in the 1960s. Uh, that explains how old I am. <laughs> I trace back to 1960. Many of these people were born after 1960 and, and, and 70s. The first movie I saw about reincarnation is what? Heaven Can Wait. Have you seen that movie? Who has seen that movie? You're not old enough to see that movie. <laughs> Have you seen that movie? So, you, you know, Heaven Can Wait. Heaven Can Wait is a movie, uh, it's, it's a Paramount picture. It's by, um, what is this? What is this? The leading role. It's, um, huh? Warren Beatty. Warren Beatty is, is, still, is, is he still alive? I don't know. Yeah. Heaven can wait. And the story, it, it's good to see that movie. Maybe it's on YouTube, I don't know. I think, I think it first started with someone, someone cycling. This Warren Beatty was riding a bicycle, and by mistake, he turned into the wrong road. He got into, into a, a tunnel that meets with the track of a train. So it was. It was you're riding a bicycle and boom, you know, there was a, a, a close-up on his, his singing and, ri and riding a bicycle. He seemed to be very happy in his, in his, in his what? In his uh, jogging suits. And then he went into a, into a tunnel. The next thing we heard is boom. He collided with a train. How could he survive if he collided with a train? And then the next scene is he was walking up this heaven in a cloud. Someone is waiting for you, waiting for him. And I think that the guy's name is Mr. Chip or something like that. And he said, uh, something like that, he said, oh, uh, the Mr. Chip was looking at his computer. At that time, in the 1960s, they already have computer. It's a digital computer. You know, it's a computer. Of course, not as thin as this computer. That computer is that thick. It was still a computer with clouds, and this Mr. Chip was, was, was keying the keyboards. And you say, uh, and this, and this one beauty walk up and say, "Oh, what happened to me?" It was a, uh, what do you mean? You're dead already, and I'm checking into your, <laughs> your all your particulars. And he checked into all his particulars and he said, "Oh, there's a problem coming up. You shouldn't have been dead. You're not due as yet. The heaven can wait for you. You're not due. You have to go back." We did it by mistake. You, you, you shouldn't die. We did it by mistake. You've got to go back. We cannot make this mistake. You must go back. Your karmic energy tells us that you've got to go back. So what did Mr. Chip do? Mr. Chip lead him down, lead him down to hell, not to hell, to, to the world again. And he has to enter another body. The first, first body he enters is as a boxer's body. You know boxing? Boxer body. And then they end into a body of, 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 of a multi-billionaire, enter in the body of many, many, many bodies. And he experienced different lives and different bodies. Isn't it interesting? Go and see that movie. I'm not advertising for that movie. But that's a movie that teaches you about reincarnation. Yeah. All right, so I got three questions in here anyway. Three questions in here. The first question is, there are two statues of elephant outside of the temple. What are the meaning of those? Any meaning? Someone asked me how to, do, how to deal with panic attacks. So let's resolve the first question first. The elephants outside. The elephants outside? We just put the elephants in the parking lot about five days ago. Seven tons each. Close to eight tons. Nine feet in height. Elephants... Do you, if you observe very carefully, they have six tasks in each elephant. Three tasks in each side. Teeth, teeth, right? Usually the elephant has one tooth. The same elephant has six teeth, six tasks. And those are very sane elephants. And they are protectors of Buddhism. There was a story like that. There were two people practicing in previous lives. Two people practicing the Buddhist teaching, meditation and all that. And um, one of the practitioner particularly emphasized on reading sutras and try to get complete psychological, philosophical understanding of it. In other words, he understood all the meaning behind the Buddhist studies. 
and he practiced accordingly. Meditation, you know, he's not attached to materials and all that. He's just on the spiritual side. One petitioner is like that. The other petitioner, he was always giving out. He was, he was always caring out for others. Whatever he has, he liked to donate, he liked to give out to people. But he ignores somehow on his own practice. But he just wants to, to, to give, to help. There are people like that. There are people who think as if they are born to help. There are, there are um, uh, across the border uh, doctors, right? What do you call that? Out of the borders, huh? Huh? Across the borders? Uh, well, doctors without borders, they always think of helping people, getting them the best they can, helping out the sick and the poor. They're the, always, the one petition is always helping other people and not practicing wisdom and med meditation. They both passed away later. And the petitioner who practiced meditation and samadhi and intelligence and wisdom, he became a Pratyaka Buddha. He was able to go beyond reincarnation and suffering again. In other words, it's not going into reincarnation loop of life and death again because he is in enlightened land. He's in a, in a, in a state where is, he's enlightened and he's in eternity of no suffering. He's out of reincarnation, out of life and death. We are not. So he's become an arahat. And there's another person, he, he, he was reborn into the animal's realm as an elephant. But he's not, a, he's not an, an ordinary elephant. He's an or elephant that was treated in the palace as a saintly elephant with all the adornments and decorations, jewelries and everything on his head. And he was born with six tasks. And what is more particular about him, he's always promoting, this elephant is almost helping the monks. He always, when he see monks, he becomes very happy. He, 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 sometimes if, if, he, if he go out, he would go to different temples and and this is a special elephant, a saintly elephant. So he's protector of Buddhism. And some people then, the disciples of Buddha ask, uh, how come these two disciples, because some of them have supernatural, super power, they saw their previous life and they asked, how come one petitioner reincarnated into a, an elephant, the other became enlightened, became, an, you know, Pratyaka Buddha? Because he only gave out, he didn't practice. In his next life, he's enjoying all the luxuries of life. But he's, since he has no wisdom, he's still reincarnated into the animal's realm without wisdom. But here's an animal that enjoys all the luxuries, the king's luxuries. The king treated that elephant better than many, many ministers. Gave, gave the elephant the best enjoyment because of what he has done. You always give out. Whatever you give, it returns back to you. They give out services. All the services and luxuries would roll back to the elephant. So you see the difference? So you have to practice wisdom and meditation, concentration, not just, not just on building up merits for your next life for, to, be, to have a better life. If you have a better life, sure, but you don't have the wisdom to get enlightened. So the elephants is a symbol of protection of Buddhism. Do you understand? So that answers the quest, quest, first question. Second question is, someone asked me how to deal with panic attack. Some people have panic attack. They always get frightened. There's a mental affliction in their mind. And to deal with that panic attack, they, they have to know that they have to let go of it. And it's very difficult to let go. You have to go through a series of training to let go of that panic attack. There was a true story in the story of reincarnation. There was a, a child, about six, seven years old, uh, um, a girl, and whenever she heard the roaring of a plane going by over the sky, she got panic. She didn't know why. The sound of a plane in the sky, any sound about plane flying, he got panic. And later, through analysis of, of, of past life regression and analysis, later they all discover that there was a, a, a reincarnation story. The previous life of that girl, she was a soldier uh, in Thailand. I think in Thailand and Japan, I don't know. I wouldn't, in, in, in somewhere in, in, in Thailand. And one day, he, 
he incorrectly into into a, a girl, but he was a, a man before. One day he was he was his response for cooking for his regiment, cooking for a regiment of say 30, 40, 40, 40 soldiers. He was co cooking in front of a tent, and all of a sudden all these planes flying by, and the, and from the plane the machine guns shooting down, and all the soldiers were running for life, running into the bush. And he saw, he heard this plane, it was, she was, he was also running in the bush, but he got hit at the back and he died immediately. And then he reincarnated into this, into this girl. So whenever she heard any roaring of a plane, the sound of a plane, she got panic. More than just a panic, she, she felt painful at the back because she got shot at the back in previous life. So panic, it could be because of reason of a previous life, it could be because of a reason in this life. So how do you deal with it? First of all, you have to understand that life is not just of the present, it's the previous of the past and the future. If you, haven't, if you, if you do not get enlightened, you still roll into the future of reincarnation. The Buddha teaches us how to stop the ocean of life and death. Go beyond it. Don't sink into the ocean of life and death. So, if you have this panic attack, it could be because of previous life, some certain, certain feelings or scenario of previous life that brought to this life. And you have to learn how to tackle it by understanding how it comes, how it may have come. And then you have to train yourself, whenever that panic comes up, you have to let go of it because you know that it is fictitious, it is conditional. It is because of last life feeling which is brought back into this karmic energy in this life. It has no substance by itself. It is fictitious. It is something happened in the past. It will not happen again. But you got panic because you got recollection of that painfulness. So you really have to put that training in your mind that you have to let it go. Let it go. But unfortunately, you don't know about your previous life. You just let it go. Whenever it comes, that idea, that thought, when it comes, you have to understand that thought. That's the reason why I told you at the beginning of this session, back at the, at the meditation hall, Buddhism is to study every thought. When the thought of panic comes up, you don't continue that thought. When that thought continue in the first round, continue the second round, third round, it picks up momentum. When it picks up momentum, it has a force that drives you down. It can even drive you to committing suicide. It can even drive you to, to, to short of breath. Some people, they can't breathe, but they may not die. They think they're dying. They cannot breathe because they panic. They're so panicky that they cannot breathe. But if they can overcome it, there's no problem in the breathing. He thought that he's going to stop breathing, but he's not. So you have to resolve the panic by understanding yourself by knowing where this panic comes from, you have to let go of the panicky feeling. You have to train yourself in that way. You have to understand how that thought comes up. And then you don't con continue with the second thought. If the second thought insists, then you con don't continue with the third thought. You have to train yourself to, letting, to let go of it. And it's not easy. You have, to let, you have to train yourself and let go of all your mental afflictions, not just panicking. Not just panic, your jealousy, your hatred, your ignorance, your, I don't know, all kinds. You have to let go of them. And you have to learn about this. And one of the many ways of learning it is to increase your concentration so that you watch every thought. Can you watch every thought? A thought comes up, you just continue with that thought. You don't know what kind of thought it is. When a criminal wants to commit a crime, he always thinking, this is what I want. This is what I want to do. That's the thought that perpetuates into leading to the crime. He cannot say, stop, I can't do this. I can't hurt somebody. I shouldn't come up with a second thought. But he perpetuates the thought. The, the thought of killing comes up. A second thought, how to kill, how to plan on it. The hatred comes, it picks up momentum until finally he kills him. You understand? So you have to go through training, not just by me talking to you and you resolve the problem. So it's extremely meaningful that you do a meditation, that you come to learn meditation, but how many people know the importance of it? 
Not many. Not just of this temple. Learn your meditation. Build up your strength. Build up your concentration. Life is not just always working and, and enjoying yourself, partying and singing, drinking, you name them. Those are materialistic pursuit. Put that aside for the time being. Go into your, your I always call it the odyssey. Go into to the adventure of that odyssey. It's extremely interesting. Once you get onto that odyssey, like a Honda that you're driving in your odyssey, you won't give up because that Honda is a luxury. Go into that odyssey. That's the reason why they, they, they name a Honda, a luxury Honda, an odyssey. Go to that odyssey where you explore more about the spiritual aspect of life. Open the treasure of spirituality. Look at the treasures inside. Get in and find out more. It's just like when I always compare a meditation to watching a movie. When you're watching a movie, you go into Odeon Theater, you pay 36 how many, how many? How much you pay for, 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 for cinema these days? I always think of five dollars because that's the time last time i went <laughs> huh 14 i used to pay 330 or or five no, now it's 14. all right so you get into a theater you, you you see somebody else script you cry you fall asleep, you feel sorrowful you see somebody else script about life and death why don't you see your own script watch your own script you are the director of that script you are the actor you're the prop manager you build up that, that script of life in you. Watch it. Be interested in your own script. Why are you interested in somebody else's script? You cry. You become sorrowful. You laugh. Can you do the same thing with your own script first? Can you be interested in yourself first? That's not egoistic. You try to understand yourself. Next question. How do I manage or get rid of my feeling of attachment relating to my desires of wanting more? Well, your desire of wanting more, you identify each thought of desire. And then the first thought come up, comes up, second thought, you try to discontinue it. And more than just discontinue your the desire, try to analyze that desire. Why you have that desire? Why you want a luxury home? You want to show off. You want to show your dad or your, your friends that you're well off. You're better well off than them. You have the ability to do that. You want to show off. Is that what you want? You want to show off? It does not matter how you show off. There are always people higher than you. There are almost people who are richer than you. By showing off your, your luxuries, why don't you show off something that is more benevolent to human, to, to mankind, on a grand scale, other than, other than benefiting just yourself on an egoistic self-view scale. Broaden your horizon of love, if you call it love. Broaden your view. And if by having a luxury home, or by having multi-million dollars, you will be happier, I think you've got a wrong perception of happiness. A lot of multi-billionaires, when you interview them, reporters, really, but they say that, they all, most of them say that money would not buy your happiness. Money alone would not buy your happiness. You need money to survive, but money alone cannot buy your happiness. As a matter of fact, if you, if, if you use all kinds of means to get that money by hurting other people directly or indirectly, you're building up a lot of coming energy in your computer. You can't get rid of it. Mr. Chip is always waiting for you. He's either in heaven or in hell or in other realms, different realms that you'll be going into. There's another book that I read many years ago and it's called Goodbye Mr. Chip. When you say goodbye Mr. Chip, that means you roll into the next round of reincarnation. Okay, next, uh, I often feel slightly depressed, inadequate and unfulfilled that I don't have certain things in life like a bigger home or more children. I want to detach from these feelings and thoughts. Bigger home, luxury homes, I already explained it to you about. Um, what's the problem with a small house? 
if you live if you live happily in a small house, why do you need a a, a 10,000 square feet luxury home in Sonnesy? You're the target for 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 break in. <coughs> you know, there's so many problems if you're living in in Sonnesy. A small house, if you tend to it in the most peaceful way, is even better than a bigger house. Yeah. So you need more children. Why do you need more children? You, you see all the troubles that make sometimes? <laughs> when children come back as your children, they come back with four retributions, with four reasons when children come back to you as your children. You know what it is for? Attributes that they want to come back, reasons to come back first. You owe them money and they come back to get it. You bring their previous life, you owe them money before. They come back, you have to give them education and once, they, once you pay out all the money, he say goodbye to you. He will not show his filial piety towards you. I, when I was working in, uh, one summer uh, in, um, in Banff, in my first year at University of Toronto, I was working as a summer student washing dishes in, as a pantryman, they call it a pantryman. So we were washing dishes, as, you know. And I, I still remember that guy, uh, my, my co-worker, and he worked as a permanent, I worked as a, as a summer student, but he worked as a permanent worker. And we, 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 we always talk and he said, I don't like to live in my family. I, I left my family at the age of 16. And uh, one day, my dad told me, my mom told me, get away. You, you, you can be on your own. Don't come back again. And that's exactly how I feel, so I left home. There's no more debt to be paid. There's no more relationship in their mind. They just say, goodbye, get out. Sometimes it's just like that. The same thing applies to love between a man and a husband. When they're in the first love, what do you call that first love? April love? <laughs> what do you, and then they always, you know, they, they care for each other and when the time comes, they depart. So, the first reason is they come for a, a monetary debt. I'm not always negative. You know, I have to finish my sentences before, before you say I'm negative. There are good things behind, okay? I'm not negative. I'm positively negative or negatively positive. <laughs> So, you either have to pay a monetary debt back, back, and let me give you another example about this monetary repayment. I know a, a lady back in Toronto, a rich lady, and his daughter at that time was studying at Harvard Law. So, she brought up her daughter in the best possible ways in Hong Kong. Always care for her studies, always have all these tutors, have different tutors, a French tutor, you know, all these English tutors and Chinese tutors, spend all money just to, to nurture uh, her, uh, her, her daughter to be the best student. She was able to be number one all the time at school because of the nurturing, because of this education provided to him in school and off school at home and everything. And she got into Harvard Law. And of course, the mom spent a lot of money on her. And right after one year, uh, after being a judge, she committed suicide. You know, she committed suicide. And the mom was crying and crying, very sorrowful. And one year later, the mom passed away. So they're repaying each other in monetary terms. So other than monetary debt, that is emotional debt too. Uh, you betrayed him, he'll betray you in this life. You divorced him, he'll divorce you in this life. It's, a it's always trying to get equilibrium. That's the reason why you think you can get away with something you have done wrongly on someone. It will get back to you. Don't do any mischief, mischievous things because it will finally get back to you. So what do I do? Repent. You vow you never do it again. And whenever, you know, in your previous life, you have gone through a lot of previous life, you know. 
and in your previous life, you could have hurt a lot of people. You could have divorced your wife in the most brutal way, or divorced your husband. You could have betrayed him. You could have done a lot of bad things about your relatives. And some of them, they may not have reincarnated. They may be in the ghost realm. They have been following you even up to now. You know why you always encounter something bad? They didn't want you to be good because you did the wrong thing on him or her. They, even in the ghost realm, they have been following you since many, many years and they're still around the house. That's why whatever you do, you don't feel that, that everything is smooth for you. You, have, you want a job and you want to do, perform that, that job well, somehow you always get fired. Not solely because of your own ability, somehow something happened. Because he, invisibly, is getting you. So there's monetary debt, emotional debt, that is you, you are repaying him. There's two conditions. You are repaying him on monetary or emotion. But on the other hand, they could be repaying you. You have a son, and that son really treats you well. He's number one at school, makes you very proud, and he respected you so much that he always said, Mom, I always want to stay with you. Even if I get married, I want to live with you because I love you dearly, Mom. I love you all my life. He's coming to repay you. Repay your emotion, repay your debt. So it's not just negative. Sometimes it's positive. He's repaying you. Why do your husband love you more than what seems to be other hus husbands loving their wife? Because your husband comes back to repay you. Even though you yell at him, he's always kind-hearted because he's repaying you. So he's re repaying you with money or he could be repaying you with emotion. He has a very high EQ. He always cares for what you feel. He always loves you so much that you feel very happy in your life. And in some love, even if the, the wife or the husband have a terminal il illness, the husband always stay beside her, her, her bed, always want to care for everything until the, the, the wife passes away peacefully. And that man, he does not want to remarry again. He always wants to remember his wife, you know, give him a good grave. And he, when, 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 he said, when I die, I want to, to be buried beside the grave of my wife. Because they come to be, he comes to repay. So different people commit different calming energy. Nothing about God. If God can forgive, if God can give, can give you all that God should have, avoid all these troubles that you have. It's only logical. Whatever you have done, you can get away just by saying, God forgive you. God may have forgiven you, but he hasn't. He still cares. Did I answer that question? I've, I've, I've been talking for a long time already. Any question? Any counter-argument? Any opinion? Nothing? Okay, last question. How do you silence your inner voice or commentary it does not stop talking and I'm tired of it. Well, that inner voice in you, that commentary in you, I don't know how it appears to you. Some people, I have, some people who always told me, that I always heard a man's voice talking to me. I don't know if it's your illusion or what, I don't know. But if there's an inner voice in you and, and, and it does not stop talking and you're tired of it, what kind of inner voice is this? Is it an inner voice that infuriates you, that makes you depressed, or what kind of, I don't know what kind of inf an inner voice in you. And um, if there's an inner voice in you that you cannot stop, there could be many reasons. Maybe that inner voice is coming to someone you hurt before is coming to get you. And what do you do in this situation? If they always repent, always want to return your payment. So if, if, if there's the inner voice saying that you owe me so much, you, know, you owe me a lot, 
you got to repay me. Then you repay them. How do you repay them? You do all kinds of good deeds and dedicate the marriage to him. Because you can't see him, right? But first of all, you have to repent on what you have done. You have to say, I am sorry. I shouldn't have done it. When I did that, I was out of ignorance to do that, to have done that. Now I repent. I don't want to do that anymore. On top of that, I want to make up for what you have lost. So maybe I'll donate $50,000, $10,000 to, uh, to some, to a charity. But I want that because on everything you have done, there's merits accrue from it. And you want to dedicate this kind of accruals or merits to that spirit or that inner voice that you have wronged. And he'll receive it. He'll receive it. Although you can't see it.